kick it off, would love to know a little bit about yourself. What's your story? How'd you kind of get into Web3, Navi AI, and you know what you're doing there? I have been in fintech for over 20 years. Kind of, I guess I would say it's a traditional route, but all of us have a non-traditional route, and that's I think what brings most of us to the space. So I double majored when I went to university. I, um, and this was before the words um, FinTech existed. So I actually had to get permission to double major. So I have a comp sci degree. And then I also have a master's in finance and accounting. And my original plan was I was going to be a CPA, go the very TradFi route, you know, what everybody expected. And then I am not a fit in the box kind of gal. I'm very much a blow the box up kind of gal. So I spent a number of years in corporate America after public accounting, um, led a team of 50 plus globally at a Fortune 500 tech company, and then decided I had an opportunity to dive into VC-backed startups, and it sounded exciting and fun. And as part of that, they had a couple of potential clients come on and they said, hey, you know about this stuff called crypto because I was very involved personally. And I was like, yeah, why? And so I basically led the charge to create a revenue vertical for them and built them out from zero to over 40 clients in just a handful of months. Then the first bear market happened, which they got very skittish about, understandably. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go off on my own. So in the last few years, I have um, in some capacity worked with over 300 Web3 native companies. And in doing that through a financial services company, very quickly realized 100% of them have the same problems. And that is where the idea for Navi AI came from. So what is Navi AI? What, what are you solving and what are their problems? 90% of startups fail. Doesn't matter what industry it's in, that's the stats. And when you look at the reason why, it's almost always knowledge, right? Startup founders have limited runways. Usually early growth companies are bootstrapped. They're taking that funding and they're building. They're using it for dev, things to actually create their product to hopefully get it off the ground. But the problem with that is there's compliance regulation and finance that are vitally important to make sure that they not only properly utilize any funding they get, but that they have a chance to make sure that other areas don't fail their project. Um, And almost 100% of the time, that's the downfall. It's something related to that. You know, getting great market fit is a a huge component of it, but doing it legally, regulatory, compliance-wise, and with strong financial backgrounds is why they need to have that market fit. Uh, So we're looking to solve that. So we've created an AI-enhanced social community. Uh, It's very Reddit style, if you will. You can go on as a founder. We're in a free beta right now. You can post a question in one of those three topics, and we KYC and vet professionals in the space that then come on and answer those questions. So if you're a founder and maybe you've done a fundraise and you didn't know you had to file a 409A and have a valuation of your company, you don't even know what it is. You just had someone tell you. You can post a question about that. It's actually one of our top trending questions at the moment. And you can get an answer from someone who does know. Instead of having to go out and automatically engage with a company that you don't have a relationship with at 500 plus an hour, you can look at the professionals that someone else has vetted and make sure that the resources and knowledge that you're gaining is trusted and what you actually need. And then once you build the relationship, then you can actually engage with those companies feeling a lot stronger because if you know they can support what you're doing, you've built a relationship there. So we're adding a human component and community back into emerging tech, which I think is sorely needed. Interesting. And then what? how's the AI kind of function and I think factor into this Reddit for professionals kind of style that you guys are going for? Yeah. So our goal is to create an entire ecosystem, not just have the community aspect. So our roadmap also includes adding in other tools that are needed, templates, educational webinars, being able to connect um, actual engagements through the product, kind of Fiverr style. So what we're doing is we're essentially saying, hey, what has everyone else done really well? And let's replicate that in a way that's beneficial for both the founders and the professionals. And AI has to be a part of that because of like it or not, um, depending on where you fall on that knowledge base, uh, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere, right? And so rather than people feeling like they should just go to a chat GPT or a copilot or any other AI tool, what we are doing is we are essentially bringing it into the platform. Right now, we are only allowing it to be kind of a sit beside so it can help summarize answers, help you search the platform, basically do any of the things that a chat GPT can. 
But our long-term goal is once we as a community have solved the issue of bias in AI and um, hallucination a little bit better within AI, we will have it folded more um, definitively into the product. We didn't want to do that from the beginning because we really wanted to make sure that that knowledge was a actual trusted vetted source that the user could feel good about and not basically just replicate what already exists. How do we go about solving some of those things with AI? Obviously, it's very early on. The onset of it has only been really a couple years you know, in the mainstream and having these tools available to us. And there are things like bias and incorrect information being pulled from wrong sources and things like that, but it's constantly getting better and better. Um, what, what do you think maybe is the solution to kind of getting it a little bit further ahead to where it needs to be and then having it as that grandiose tool that we can use, um, like with Navi AI? So I think the first thing we have to acknowledge is it's not going to happen overnight. I think everybody wants it to because emerging tech moves so quickly. But with AI, the leading voices behind open AI um, with Google, all of these major brands that have a lot more resources to dive into with this have said it's it's going to be a while. Um, I think the biggest thing we can do is support, support the projects that are trying to solve those issues. There's some wonderful projects working on specifically uh, hallucination and bias and understanding how those data subsets create that bias and how further to take technology that exists now to solve it. I am not that technical uh, where I would do any kind of justice to explaining it, but there are wonderful projects. So I would say really having investors put funds towards those because of that really is the next step to the tech that already exists. And you said it's in beta right now, correct? And then when do you think it'll be ready to launch to the general public for people to start using more frequently? It's actually, even though it's beta, it's open beta. So if you go to our website, anybody is welcome to sign up. If you're a professional, you would be recommended to reach out to us directly because we will vet you and you will get credentialed badges that um, show where your expertise is so that you can show up on that leaderboard. Um, our MVP goal is to launch by Q1 with more of the features that I talked about. Right now, uh, we're limiting it more to like the leaderboard and the community aspect because we really fully believe that community is at the heart of it. And then the ecosystem and additional features will get built out as we, one, fundraise and get more funding to support it. And then two, identify the best, um, the best roll out as far as the timing. But Q1 of 2025 is the plan for the official MVP. Awesome. And then what's your guys' goal here at Permissionless? I know that there's a huge focus as well um, on AI here. There's a lot of AI and blockchain, um, you know, kind of being worked in through a lot of the speakers and some of the things you can uh, attend while here. Do you guys have plans to network with some of those other um, startups or projects, or are you guys also participating in speaking later on, or what's your main goal trying to get out of this for Navi AI? Our goal, it really isn't about us. And this is a foundational block, uh, a the company of Navi, of just everything that we do, we believe wholeheartedly in supporting not just the ecosystem, but every individual within it. So anyone who comes up to me, I don't gatekeep my time. Um, I'm always willing to meet with people. I also am a big proponent of asking, what do you need? So every conversation I have, my goal is to find out the individuals I meet, what they need and help make the introductions, help them with their project. I am a big believer that what I put out in the world will come back to me in the source of what I need without needing to focus on myself. So my goal at every single conference is really just gaining the knowledge that others have to share and then seeing how I can support what they're doing. Where can people go if they want to join that open beta for Navi AI, just the website or somewhere in particular? And then where can you guys have like an external community attached to that? Or where would you want to send people? So the best place to find more information about all of our socials as well as join the beta or anything else is our website. And that is naviai.app. So N-A-V-I-A-I dot A-P-P. -A um, feel free to reach out to me on social media. I'm pretty easy to find. I'm bite-sized CEO on uh, X and I'm also on TikTok and pretty comical if I do say so myself. So that's always a fun time. And then just reach out to me. I, I love to talk to people and I will make sure if anybody's interested that they have my ear. Sounds great. Thank you for taking the time, Amber. Enjoy Permissionless. Thank you so much for having me.